school. I'm originally from Miami. Parents are from Colombia. I ended up in Vegas here uh, back in 2001. Came here on a vacation and moved here three months later. DJing was kind of like my hobby. So little by little, kind of worked my way into some of the clubs and here we are 14 years later. This year, I got to go down to Miami Music Week. I played down at 11, hottest place in Miami. My friend Danny Solomon, which is a you know, managing partner, he got me to play a couple shows. I got to play with uh, Benny Benassi and Dash Berlin. Uh, it was kind of crazy. I landed in Miami. My manager called me up and he's like, dude, get to the beach now. There's a banner going down South Beach with your name on it. I mean, I had the driver haul butt down to the beach, ran out to my balcony, and I got to see my banner fly by with, uh, with my name on it, which is surreal. To top it off, the owner of the club called me up. He's like, we're going to do it again. Uh, I got a team together. We ran down to the airport, and I got to see it on the floor with my name, which is like, I had to pinch myself, and we saw it launch off. I was like sending pictures and videos to my mom. She was like, I'm so proud of you. It was awesome. I mean, it was one of those trips where I'll never forget. Eleven is sort of the spot in Miami where everybody ends up at. My sets don't start till five in the morning. The plan of attack is different. You come in a little strong, but for me, you kind of gradually bring it down a little bit and play music that hasn't been played in the clubs. So just flipped around, small parties, you know, the, the small record label parties are cool because that's when the guys are really hungry and putting out a lot of energy. It's amazing. The energy out there, I mean, it's Miami Music Week. It's like a festival vibe. I play Marquee. Marquee's at the Cosmopolitan. It's the first electronic venue here in Vegas. I've uh, been there since day one, and uh, it's just nuts, man. I play there three times a week. I think Vegas is different, man. We have our own little thing going on here. Marquee, you gotta bring the fire early, all the way up to the, the headliner, and then after the headline, you gotta keep that party going. Omnia is a new residency I've been taking on in, in San Diego. I've, I've played in San Diego a few times and San Diego is known more for like smaller, smaller nightclubs. This place, bigger than the average nightclub in San Diego and it's like a shiny Lamborghini. LA's got a really good hot spot right now. It's called Create. It's in Hollywood, and it's one of those clubs that's kind of like a festival. You walk in, there's actually more dance floor than there is VIP, which is sort of rare. So when the kids walk in there, they're ready to go. They're like popping and locking, and it's like I said, it's like a festival. I don't play it so much like a nightclub. I really play music for people to get down and follow my groove. <laughs> I like to open up and create a little, maybe a little deeper because they do have a deep house vibe in California, maybe a little deeper than Vegas. So I like to start off like that and kind of find that sexy groove, but we definitely hit them hard once we are going in. We hit them with some grenade launchers and make sure those kids feel my pain. Uh, we were hanging down in Newport Beach, hanging out by the sand, trying to come up with some ideas and uh, it was just one of those days where we just captured this feeling that we had, sitting down and writing the song called Summer Air. And it's only because we were just in love with that. And then we were lucky enough they had uh, Roxanne Emery came back with the vocals and it just clicked. We made this video, for this is actually a lyric video, shots going on of Southern California, the beach, boats, and just capturing that summer vibe, which basically inspired us the day that we wrote the song. You can see the video for Summer Air on EDM TV on YouTube. Well, musically, I'm trying to develop uh, songs 
that are gonna be kind of timeless. And I know that's a hard task to do because right now music is so recyclable. You have these tracks or songs that come out and a month later they sound old, but I really want to work on lyrics and vocals that when I play, the whole room could sing. So I'm trying to find those perfect lyrics, that vocalist that's just gonna like, I'm gonna drop and I'm gonna look around and everyone's gonna be able to sing it. Now that could go through a lot of different styles. I could do some progressive tracks and maybe some houseier ones. So I'm exploring a couple different avenues, which are all brands that I like. Most important, vocals, lyrics, and a chunky beat. You know what? I really want to say that uh, at the end of the day, sometimes when, when these things come about, people get lost in the message. It's not about VIP. It's not about making money. It's all about the music. All right? So when you get involved in dance culture, don't forget to follow your heart. That's the most important thing that's going to keep dance culture alive. Everything else is secondary. Music first. You want to check me out? Check me out at jasonlima.com. Thank you.